Yo, it is good, yo, it's your boy Ty back here with another video, and in this video today, guys, we're going to be going over and talking about the top 10 centers in NBA 2K23, my team. Now, I want to start off this list by saying, look, this is all personal preference, okay? If your favorite center doesn't make this list, that doesn't mean that they are bad. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't be using them. That's not what it means. These are just some of my personal favorite centers in my team. And a lot of these guys, you know, are just the best of the best, right? I mean, it's just kind of self-explanatory to, uh, to some people when it comes down to some of the best. Obviously, again, some of this is personal preference stuff like that. Now, we're going to start off the list at number 10 with the new takeover order, one of the newer takeover rewards, Pink Diamond Brook Lopez. Now, we're going to start with why I personally like Brook Lopez, and a lot of it has to do with defensively. I think defensively, it's tough to really beat what Brook Lopez is going to provide on the interior. 96 interior, great rebounder. As far as his strength, you know, stuff like that, it's good as well. Now, obviously, his speed being a 70 isn't great. His perimeter isn't, you know, the best either. But, you know, it's only an 80. But with that in his lateral goodness, it's only an 80. With that being said, I still think what he gives you as far as a complete defensive player is up there. Because against guys like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Brooke Lopez is going to be able to compete. Whether you like the card or not, he is going to compete at that highest level. That's what he's going to do. Now, one thing that I hate is his release. Brooke Lopez based on slow. You want to think of Brooke Lopez as being one of the best stretch bigs in the game. The problem is... It's his release, right? He's got Hall of Fame catch and shoot, Claymore, corner specialist. He's got great shooting badges. The problem is that release is just so bad that it's honestly hard to use the card, right? And I hate saying that, you know, that he, it's hard to use him strictly because of his release, but that's honestly the truth, right? When you look at the card, everything is basically perfect outside of his release. That's why Brooke Lopez comes in here at number 10. At number nine, I hate the fact that I'm including him on this list. But he deserves a spot, Pink Diamond, Joel Embiid. Now, how in the world is he better than Brooke Lopez? It's his release. And I don't love Joel Embiid's release. I actually miss quite a few shots with Joel Embiid. But if you're comparing Joel Embiid's release side by side to Brooke Lopez, Joel Embiid's got the better release. Yes, Brooke Lopez is going to be better on the defensive end of the court. I'm not going to argue that. But Embiid's solid defensively as well as having some decent finishing badges, including the Hall of Fame masher. Both cards are free. Obviously, Embiid was the easier card to get. I'm giving him the nod over Brook Lopez at number nine. At number eight, Diamond Giannis Antetokounmpo. Now, people were wondering, Ty, why is he not on this at uh, the power forward? He should be on the power forward list. Why? Because I personally think of Diamond Giannis as a center. That's just me and my opinion. Why? Because the pink diamond Giannis can't play center. This Giannis can. And he is the backup center right now on my no money spent squad series. Now, why do I personally like Diamond Giannis? Hall of Fame clamps, met his post lockdown, basically every defensive badge you could ask for. And he's just such a complete player in my team. Is he going to be the best at anything? No, because he's Diamond Giannis. He's not going to give you, you know, the best defense player, the best offensive player. But he is solid at everything. And there's not many flaws in his game. 71 three ball, you can green from the midi with the card as well. Very, very solid all the way around. And he's probably going to play for me on my no money spent for quite some time. If you want to run him at the power forward, he's good there as well. I just have him at the center list because, I mean, I don't think the center position is quite as deep. Coming in here at number seven, pink diamond Jermaine O'Neal. Now, Alonzo Mourning would be like right here too, but he made the power forward list. So I'm not going to put him on the center list. I still to this day love Jermaine O'Neal. Do I love his release? No. Okay. It's where it all starts and ends. Jermaine O'Neal's release is not good. And I'm never going to hype up Jermaine O'Neal's release probably ever. I mean, it's just not a good release in my team. Does have Hall of Fame bully, post spin technician, fearless finisher. Comes with Hall of Fame vice grip, a good badge. The most important thing to me are his defensive badges as well as his defensive player model. I said it when I was running Jermaine O'Neal with Kevin Garnett. Jermaine O'Neal competes so much better on the interior than KG. Why? I don't necessarily know, but he does. He can handle the ball, play good defense. Obviously, his release leaves a little bit to be desired, but I really do like Jermaine O'Neal, and I don't regret him being the maybe second guy I went for as far as the trophy case. Next up, coming in at number six, Galaxy Opal, Patrick Ewing. Now, I've said it for a long time that Patrick Ewing is a bona fide scrub in my team, 
And do I necessarily disagree with that? No. I mean, I still do not like Patrick Ewing in my team. I think there are way better options, and I think he is one of the worst Galaxy Opals you could have gotten out of the trophy case. I mean, Jimmy Butler is better. Anthony Davis is better. Clyde's better. But with that being said, he's got Hall of Fame anchor, box out beast, brick wall, interceptor, pogo stick, and post lockdown, as well as being seven feet tall with really solid interior. As much as I want to absolutely hate this card, as much as I want to absolutely slander this card, Splash Edition used them and had some success with them. I mean, some people used them and qualified for 250k, so I can't really slander him anymore, but he's not great. I have the card, and he doesn't play for me, if that doesn't say enough about him, considering he's free, you know. I think you should double check it. Dwight Howard, yes, he was on my power forward list, but he's also got to be on my center list because I think it's about 50-50. You know, some people play him at center, some people play him at power forward. I personally think his best position is power forward, but again, that is just my personal opinion. At number five here, I talked about him a lot on the power forward list. Nothing's really going to change on the center list. Do I think his release is a little too slow for me? Yes, I wish his release was just that little bit quicker, but... I mean, stat-wise, he's really solid, especially on the defensive end of the court. Hall of Fame anchor, box out beast, brick wall, rebound chaser. I mean, the list really does go on and on. Corner specialist, uh, very good speed, solid defensively. I mean, is he going to be as good as, you know, some other guys on my list who might be a little bit taller, might do more? No. But if Dwight Howard is your favorite center in the game, I think it's valid. I really do. I think any of my top five, you can make the case, are the best center in the game. And Dwight Howard comes in at number five. At number four, Diamond Chris Stapps Porzingis. Now, I know a lot of people might disagree and say Dwight Howard is better than KP. But if you think that, you need to watch my No Money Spent Squad series to watch what I get into with Chris Stapps Porzingis. The card has went up in value. He's like 80,000 MT right now. So that's, you know, something that does concern me a little bit. But he's got Hall of Fame catch, shoot, corner specialist, dead eye, and limitless. And trust me when I tell you guys that that Hall of Fame Limitless range on Diamond Chris Stapps Porzingis is, is so cheesy in my team. I can't express it enough. It is super cheesy. 93 ball, decent speed interior. Yes, I do think you have to badge him up. Off ball pest, pogo stick, upgrade the chase down artist. Give him basically everything you can on the defensive end of the court to make him that little bit better. If you can find one with Hall of Fame rebound chase or, you know, those types of badges, yes, that's going to make him even better. But he's 7'3". It's not like the card's just an absolute liability on defense. Has decent enough speed, decent enough defense. To me, he's our number four center in my team right now. At number three, Pink Diamond, Hakeem Olajuwon. As much as I might want to put KP over Hakeem, I just can't, right? I just can't. They both can shoot the ball good. KP obviously is going to shoot the ball better than Hakeem with the Hall of Fame limitless range. But I just feel like Hakeem gives me so much more on the defensive end of the court that I cannot physically put KP higher than Hakeem, especially considering I could be running uh, KP on my road to 250k, but I'm still running Hakeem Olajuwon. Great speed, solid defensively, Hall of Fame anchor, really decent release, easy to green. I really do like Hakeem. People obviously say Hakeem's the best center in the game. I definitely think Hakeem's just a better version of Dwight Howard. I think his release is a little bit quicker. He competes better for me. That's why I have Hakeem at number three and D12 at number five. At number two to me on my center list, Dark Matter Tim Duncan. Now, a lot of people are going to say, Ty, how is he not number one? And I value that opinion because I can honestly sit here up here and say Tim Duncan almost was at number one for me. It's just he's not that tall for being a center in my team. And you guys might be like, what? He's 6'11". That's fine. I get that. But when people are running who's at my number one at center, you might want to be running Tim Duncan. That's all I can sit here and say. I'm not going to sit here and say you got to do anything. But that is does hold him back a little bit, the fact that he's 6'11". Yes, he's a nearly perfect card. Has every defensive badge in the game. Most of them are on Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame, Vice Grip, Post Playmaker, Claymore, you can give him limitless range. Do I think his release is on the slower side of things? Yes. Do I wish he had the Tim Duncan base on quick? Yes. But he's still at number two on my list. And at number one, Pink Diamond, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Now, why do I like Kareem more than Tim Duncan? Let's talk about it. Start. Gotta start with the fact that he's 7'2", right? 7-2 compared to 6-11. That's a massive difference. Defensively, the cards are eerily similar. Kareem's a little bit faster. Tim's got some better defensive stats. They're eerily similar. And just as overall cards, they're similar. Yes, Tim Duncan's going to shoot the ball better. In my opinion, Kareem's 
player model does enough for him to be higher than Tim Duncan. That's just my opinion though. I've been using Kareem for the last, what, month and a half. So obviously I'm used to the card. Obviously I've had a lot of success with him. So I'm biased for Kareem. Like if you got Tim Duncan, if you grinded all that time and have him as far as, you know, on your squad, he should play for you. And honestly, I think the center position is the best position for him to play just because we do have AD, just because we do have Giannis at that power forward position. I personally, I like Tim Duncan. I said it on my power forward list. I don't got a problem with him. I just think Kareem as an overall card does more for me. Big Z, Arvidas Sabonis, Jared Allen, those guys did just miss the list. And honestly, this card right here should have made the list, right? This is a card that I kind of forgot about. I made the list this morning. Kind of forgot about this card as well. This card probably would land in that seven to eight range as well. A massive card that can get the job done. So I'm not perfect. I'm going to forget some cards, but let me know your thoughts on it on my list down below in the comments, guys. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, man, I love you guys and have a blessed day.